southern coast because Great Britain has just acquired East Florida from Spain. And he comes here, we get his permission to name a square for him. He did put a little qualifier on it. He said, not while I live, you won't. But you can name it for me when I'm gone. So that square did not get his name right away. They didn't name it Washington Square for eight years after its creation. 1799, he died. And it got the name of Washington. He said, name one for General Green and General Warren. Neither of those uh, men are still alive. They won't mind. So we also named Green Square right in front of us. And Warren Square is the first square west of Washington Square. How many know the name Warren? He was killed at the Battle of Bunker Hill. He was the first American general officer to die in the Revolution. And uh, if you live in a state with a Warrington, a Warrenville, a Warren, a Warren County is named for Joseph Warren, the doctor, Warren, who took a direct hit, I believe I read somewhere, from a from an incoming cannonball. Got hit. Right there, 1810. That building right there on Green Square is where Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was staying in 1963 and put the finishing flourishes to his I Had a Dream speech and then gave it the following Sunday prior to going to Washington and giving it to the world. He gave it a second African Baptist church right there. So they got it first. 1963. This square name for General Green, 1799. If you read the marker, it also says Secretary of War Edwin Stanton. Mm -hmm. And General Sherman met with the black uh, church leaders and first came up with uh, the idea for 40 acres and a mule from a meeting they held here. 40 acres and a mule. So that church is uh, unimpressive as it is um, architecturally. It's got connected to Dr. King and the I Had a Dream speech. It's also connected to 40 acres and a mule mm. right there. This little house in here, tucked in here sideways, doesn't even face the street. If you look at it, it says 1794. See right in there? 1794. Wonder why it doesn't face the street. Y'all want to know? Yeah. The street wasn't here until 1800. <laughs> that house sat out in the woods on a dirt road. Oh. That was just a house out in the country. Oh, really? Out of town. This, this was all the country. In the early 1700s. By the end of the 1800s, it's becoming a neighborhood, and they're building houses and laying out squares and, and measuring out streets. Savannah's first suburb is called, uh, informally called, the Old Fort. You're in the Old Fort section. Doesn't that house look like it should be in Connecticut? Rhode Island. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. <laughs> they talk like that in New Hampshire. They say we talk funny. <laughs> we talk to you know. <laughs> That's who built a boat. That's where I was going with that. People from New England came down here to buy cotton. Oh, that's How many know that in the colonial times there were 400 mills along the coast of New England? From Maine all the way down to Long Island. Uh, so, uh, turning cotton into gold, they called that. Cotton and the gold. So where they get their cotton? Savannah. There's the old Savannah. This was a rundown, scary neighborhood out in the woods. Just no streets, you know, just wherever, you know. Throw something up. Keep the roof, keep the rain off. And uh, people started coming in here with money and buying all this up, and it became what you see now. Columbia Square, known for the District of Columbia, 1799. My four favorite live oaks. 